Bob's Good Night America, starring Mark DiCarlo. Tonight, a very special episode. Mark is sacrificed on an Aztec altar with Dave World co-star Delane Matthews. Pop culture psychologist Phyllis Condry. Plus tonight's band, the Royal Crown Review. And now, please say goodnight to Mark DiCarlo. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Welcome to the show. The Rhythm Royal Crown Review. Give it up for them, huh? The Rockin' Rhythm Royal Crown Review. We're going to be hearing from them later on in the show. Isn't that correct, Eric? Absolutely. Uh, Flatfoot Fluji with the Floy Floys, the tune I've been requesting all night. Hello. Perhaps we'll hear that later on. Now, folks, the show is called Good Night America, which means we represent and we want to entertain the entire country, but from time to time, we like to single out one particular area of the country to maybe shine our light of favor upon a little brighter than, than normal. We chose to do that tonight. I'd like to take a moment along those lines to salute the great state of Indiana. Folks, can we have a hand for the state of Indiana? It's a fabulous state, also known as the Hoosier State. As you know, it was the 19th state to join the Union. And uh, many of our uh, favorite uh, affiliates, actually two of them are located there, W-A-N-E in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and W-I-S-H in Indianapolis, uh, Indiana. And we'd like to honor Indiana because it is also the home of former Vice President Dan Quayle. Oh. That's right. And we here at Good Night America would like to be the first late night show to openly support Dan Quayle's bid for the 1996 Republican nomination for President of the United States. There you go, right there. And we're gonna start that bandwagon rolling, Dan, because... I should not interrupt because, you know, I support you 150% of this I hear thing, you. But I'm looking at the quail for president button. Uh, quail's misspelled. Not, <laughs> he'll never know. This is not a political... Don't get me wrong, this is not a political decision. We feel that Dan Quayle it's always good for a laugh, and what's good for show business and what makes the business of putting on shows easier is therefore good for the country. So, Mr. Quayle, call us if you need someone to lick a stamp or stuff an envelope. Of course, there are many other famous people that have come from Indiana, other famous Hoosiers. You've got Mr. John Mellencamp. You've got Mr. Michael Jackson, Mr. David Letterman. But none of those entertainers, folks, are as beloved as the man we've chosen to honor Indiana here tonight. You may know him from his days in Boston, but his home, his original home, that's right, is French Lick, Indiana. Ladies and gentlemen, here on Good Night America, old number 33, Larry Bird! <laughs> some thrills, mister. Yeah. Boy, you he know. It looks like he can still go through the finals. <laughs> I don't think retirement has been really that kind to him, but hey, he was here. Our first guest does not hail from Indiana, but she's actually been there, I understand. She is from CBS's number one new hit series, Dave's World. Please welcome Miss Delane Matthews. <laughs> Delane. You're wearing a coat. You weren't wearing a coat earlier. I just attacked someone backstage and took it off them. I've been so cold. Looks like you attacked James Brown from the yeah. look of that coat. I'm desperate, but if you look, the, the, uh, the inner lining matches some of the ticket stubs on my dress. So, you know, hey, it worked for me. You look very nice. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. coming out here. My so, pleasure. What's it like being in a hit show? Dave's World is that's with, uh, with uh, Big Harry and yeah. Shadow Stevens. What's I hate up? it. It's drudgery. It's just uh, no. It's nice because Harry lives out of out of town, and we work four days a week. So you know, I have a lot of fun. I hardly work at all, and now everyone hates me. <laughs> so, <laughs> now you play you play a mom on the show. Yeah. Are you a mom in real life? No, I am not. Uh -huh. But you know, playing a mom and hanging out with these wonderful children all day. It's really speeding up the clock, I'm telling you, you know. But I, you know, it's nice because if, you know, it's like there might, I hold them, I pat them, I kiss them. And, Eric and, and I it's sometimes great. behave that way. You, well, but then when something goes wrong, it's, there's your real mom, go. <laughs> there you go, you know. Now there's also another famous TV mom working on the show, huh? Mrs. Brady is, is my mom. Is she fun so, to work with? Ah, uh, she's great, you wouldn't believe it. She is, um, She's hysterically funny. She's a spitfire. 
I mean, she walked in there the first day and just filleted all of us, which well, of course makes you love her. Sure. And, well, it's uh, that Wesson oil, I think, don't <laughs> <laughs> you? Know? <laughs> you got any zany stories of you and Florence? Oh, well, just something about a bra, but I don't want to go into it. No, it's just, <laughs> no I won't. Whose bra, won't. yours or hers? No, well, hers. It wouldn't be zany if it were mine. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I can't go in. Yeah, she's, she's just really fun. She, she's done two episodes. We did the Thanksgiving episode and then the funeral episode, which, you know, Always follows the Thanksgiving yes, episode. <laughs> right, after my cooking. Um, <laughs> so she's just great, and I hope she's on many more times. All right, now, where are you from originally? I'm from Tallahassee, uh, Florida. I can primarily. detect a little bit of an accent yeah, there. Yeah, it, the more relaxed I get, the more it'll start coming out, let me tell you. Well, get as relaxed as you possibly uh, can. Not the dress. All I right. just, um, <laughs> I'm a jeans girl, and I'm just doing the best I can. Um, yeah, I'm from Tallahassee. You know, this is our salute to Indiana. Do you have any good Indiana stories you can share with us? Gosh, not a one. You ever been and to I'm, Indianapolis? Yeah, I've been all over the United States, uh, touring with the acting company, performed in every state. And, and Indianapolis? And actually, what I have, what I am very proud of, is that I've been in, I think, every mall in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> So you've had more frozen yogurt than any other human being exactly, alive. Exactly, yes. Well, now, you, you're from Florida. We want to know how good, how well you know Florida facts. So we prepared a little quiz for you here. Oh, great. All right. The answer is either going to be Florida or Indiana, which, as you know, is our honoree state tonight. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. First of all, number one, the mockingbird is the state bird of Indiana or Florida? Florida. That is correct. Very good. <laughs> Johnny Appleseed planted his way through Indiana or Florida. Johnny Appleseed. Indiana. That's correct. <laughs> Did somebody show her these questions before the show? No, I swear. You're doing very well, Delane. Number three, the Tupperware Museum, this is a real place, is located in Indiana or Florida? I believe it's St. Augustine, Florida. That is correct. <laughs> And you know what happens every time someone opens the front door to the Tupperware Museum? What? <coughs> Little burp, just right there. <laughs> Delane, which state is surrounded by a man-made moat? Um, uh, 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 I'm sorry, it's a trick question. Uh, Actually, neither of them have a man-made moat, but we're working on it. Yeah. They... Uh, so what's coming up for you next in the future? What would you like to do? Uh, we go back, uh, we go back to Dave's World July, uh, yeah, July 25th. I got my first dining room table two months ago. Very excited about that. I'll get the chairs third season. <laughs> you know. All right, we'll be right back with pop culture psychologist Phyllis Congreve and more about the latest furniture. If you or someone you know has herpes, then this is important to watch because the product I'm going to share with you is guaranteed to work. It's called Azurex. There is no cure for herpes, but there is something guaranteed to stop outbreaks, provide soothing relief, and accelerate healing. In this attack pack, there are five individual swabs. They are easy to carry and easy to use. Just snap it to activate it. If you feel an outbreak coming on, apply Azurex after that first tingle and immediately feel the relief. So if you're looking for something that's powerful, natural, and really works, then order Azurex now. Welcome back, folks. Our next guest is a pop culture psychologist from Bloomington, Indiana, and has a startling new theory that uh, analyzes human behavior using television shows, I guess. Please welcome Dr. Phyllis Congreve. Good to have you here. Have a seat. So uh, you have a unique theory of human behavior. Uh, let's, let's start there. What is it? Well, um, let me ask you something, Mark. What is the most popular television show of all time? Zoom? <laughs> I think everyone. Zoom, 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 zoom,
<laughs> Actually, uh, I would... Uh, maybe it isn't the most popular show. Um, oh, two, one, three, four. Uh, I would probably say, seriously, uh, probably I Love Lucy. Yeah, correct. Um, it's a documented fact that as we speak, I Love Lucy is playing around the planet 24 hours a day. Wow. Um, yeah, next to Mickey Mouse and David Hasselhoff, the faces of uh, <laughs> Lucy, Ricky, Fred, and Ethel are widely recognized around the world. I believe that. Yeah, in fact, um, Aborigines can recognize Lucy Ricardo from a distance of 20 meters away. <laughs> and it's that came easy. up in your research? Yes, it did. In fact, it's easy to understand the fascination because we love those characters yeah. because they are us. They are us? Yes. In fact, I think you are a Lucy. <laughs> well, now... Lucy, you've got some explaining to do. <laughs> Lucy? Now, yes. I've, heard, I've heard of psychologists giving people like, you know, you're an A personality, you're a B personality, etc. Is this kind of like that? that no, I'm a no, forget all about all of that. It's, it's all in my new book, um, I Am Lucy, You Are Fred. <laughs> in fact, um, I would say you're a Lucy, um, and Delane, if I could call you Delane, um, I would say that you are a Fred, and um, Eric over Holy there... Delane. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doctor. Okay. You, you scared her, Eric. Well, just a bit. Um, <laughs> Can I, I, I'll bet you I'm Mertzian. Actually, no. Really? No, no, you're kind of on the cusp there. I would say you're um, largely a Ricky, but you have a lot of Ethel in you because uh, well. my theory being um, that all personality, all behavior is encompassed in the Fab Four. The who? The Fab Four. Um, Lucy, Ricky, Ethel, and Fred. Um, because I think that uh, if you really want to understand yourself, you have to find the Mertz or Ricardo within you. Mm -hmm. You know? Now, what, you, you say that I'm a Lucy. What about me makes me a Lucy? Well, uh, Lucy is creative, erratic, um, childish, <laughs> doesn't think things through, um, and, uh, and Delane. Fred is dumpy and bald. Well, <laughs> he may be dumpy and bald, but yes, he's also rooted and thrifty, um, unemotional, resistant to change. Um, and I would say, uh, Eric, uh, you possess a lot of Ethel in you, in that, um, Ethel is very loyal and uh, very trustworthy, very nurturing, easily led astray, but <laughs> I also see uh, heavy Ricky tendencies there. Should and, I worry about that type of thing? Uh, well, that can depend. I mean, your personality might be in conflict because, in fact, Ricky is sophisticated, controlling, emotional, and definitely an entertainer. So you might have a war within yourself. Well, I don't think I want Lucy in the show over here. <laughs> <laughs> Eric! <laughs> now, I, if I was like, er, I know Eric is a single man, at least, I mean, you were this morning. Is there, a, <laughs> should he not marry a Fred? Should he not marry a Lucy? Is, are there, I mean, would a Fred want to marry an Ethel? And, and, uh... Well, you know, it's, it's almost so complicated that at this juncture, I can't really explore it because he is, He's a Ricky, but he has Ethel tendencies. You're a Fred, but you might have an aspect of a bit of Lucy, and if you meet another Lucy who has heavy overtones of Ricky, maybe it will be kismet or maybe not. Um, it's all, you see, it's only one aspect, and if I, if I were to draw the flow chart for you, I could, upon meeting the person you were involved with, I could probably predict the flow of the relationship based on that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Have you done a lot of clinical work? And, and Yes. Um, I spent a lot of time in the outback. And, um, <laughs> in Bloomington? Well, I, I did get a bursary to travel a bit. So I felt that um, to apply the theory, I had to go around the world, essentially, sure. to, to see, you know, because it can't just be something that's centered here. It, it's, it, it appears to be widespread. It appears to be global, really. Well, actually, and I, I, I read somewhere that they started broadcasting uh, the I Love Lucy show in 51 or 52, and, you know, the broadcast waves go out. Oh, and yes. those keep traveling through space. Yeah, because so, a cathode ray is a palpable thing. Right. Yeah. So maybe somewhere on a distant planet, Fred Mertz is revered as a god. You know, 
Yeah. You know, if they're getting more signals from here. Yeah. <laughs> could very well be, you know, I hadn't really uh, thought of it in those terms. Could you, give, could you tell, like if I gave you some famous people, could you tell us who they were? Or? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, how about um, Bill and Hillary Clinton? Okay, well, uh, he's a Lucy, she's a Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that? Because Bill always wants to be in the show, but Hillary won't let him. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it is true. It's very true. What about uh, Tom and Roseanne? Lucy and Lucy. <laughs> if you were to combine um, the bonbons in the mouth episode with the grape uh, stomping episode, out would come Tom and Roseanne. Really? Wow. Yeah. So they, they it's, it's very combustible. It's that again very. It. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it absolutely. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, Wolf, Jack Nicholson? Ooh, he's so complex, Jack. He's really, um, he's bordering on a Mr. Mooney, but, <laughs> <laughs> but again, that's my next book, and I really don't want to okay. take it. Okay, well, we, we appreciate you coming out here. The book is uh, I Am Lucy, Your Friend by uh, Dr. Phyllis Congreve. Best Come on right back, because we're going to hear the band, the Royal Crown Review. Don't go away. <laughs> We've been listening to them during the commercials all night. Now it's your chance. Give it up for the Royal Crown Review performing The Contender.
Thanks. Thank you. Well, I'm proud of you. We'll be right back. Don't go away. That was great, guys. Welcome back, folks. Turns out during the commercial uh, break, we found out that these two families are actually here in our audience from Indiana, the Sailors and the Coulters. Now, folks, I wanted to ask you a question. What exactly is a Hoosier? Does anybody know? <laughs> what, is, what, is a, what is your name? Nick. Nick. And what, do you know what that is? Yeah. What? It's a Hoosier is someone who was born and lived in Indiana, likes basketball, and the Indy 500. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but what does, who, where did Hoosier come from, that term? Do you know? Okay. Yeah. The, the theory is that people knocked on the door, and instead of saying, who's there, they said, who's here? <laughs> OK, we'll buy that. <laughs> Can I get a little, little nighttime lighting, Tom? Thanks very much. A little more nighttime lighting. That's better. Folks, as a public service here on Goodnight America, there's a few things that I know you don't want to forget before you nod off tonight. I know lots of people watch our show and go to sleep, and sometimes if that happens, you forget to do important things. So I'd like to give you a little reminder so that you don't have problems in the morning. Number one, don't forget to brush your teeth before you go to bed, because three out of four dentists agree, black doesn't sleep. Also, don't forget to hide your Playboys, because if you should die in your sleep during the night, you wouldn't want your mom to find them. <laughs> and don't put them under the mattress. That's the first place moms look. <laughs> also, folks, don't forget to lock your doors and windows. And for you really paranoid people, don't forget to duct tape your mail slot, because that way the steam people won't get in. <laughs> Thanks very much. Have a good evening. Say, say good night to our guests, the Coulters and the Sailors. Delane Matthews, Dr. Phillips Congrave, Eric Charles Boardman, and of course, our fabulous band of the night, the Royal Crown Review. That's it. Good night, America.